Right then, welcome back to another video. It's got off to a bit of a bad start already because I thought I'd have some gameplay in the background and I went with Outrun. I thought, well, that'd be cool because while I'm talking, you can see some Outrun in the background. But then I quickly realised that you're not going to see any Outrun because it's a menu screen and it doesn't autoplay into like a rolling demo. So it's just going to be that screen until I click off it. So, um, sorry about that. <laughs> so that's what you're going to have to put up with. What I may do just to show you something different is I can always press the button and show you another still screen will be kind of pointless. But interestingly, I think it's kind of interesting, this is for the 360 Outland Arcade. Out, Outland, did I say? Outrun Arcade on the 360. And I believe, unless I'm mistaken, I believe you can no longer download this. And it was something to do with the, the rights of the Ferrari uh, badge or license, and Microsoft didn't pay to have it extended or something like that. So as a result, that demo, or the full game I should say, has been pulled from Xbox Live, so you can't download it. However, I did download it about two or three years ago, so I've still got it, so it kind of works for me, which is pretty handy, because it's a decent game. It's just a shame that you can no longer buy it on Xbox Live or PlayStation Network. You know, so, um, but I get that that's the dangers, isn't it, of digital gaming. But anyway, uh, yeah, I've got a little bit of a list, which uh, if you read that there, you've got bloody good eyes. I don't even know why I showed a list. Uh, of stuff which you couldn't see as well. But uh, yeah, the first thing I want to talk about, actually I've got it down here. What a great start that is. Yeah, I've just been watching, this is pointless by the way, uh, as much of this uh, video <laughs> will will prove to be. But I've just been watching Owen, the boss of 77's vid, and in that video he talked about some uh, kind of boxes which are sturdy, or sturdy enough to ship overseas, or to ship anywhere I guess for that matter. And in that vid, Owen talked briefly about, uh, well, just fleetingly mentioned that he sent me uh, something in one of these boxes before. And I'll show that box off by covering uh, everything, which means that you get to see this, <laughs> which is completely pointless. But yeah, um, just to prove, because I said in the comment section that I still have the box and I keep it. Uh, I always keep things that people send, even if even the packing, like the boxes and stuff, it's crazy. And if they ever send like a, you know, a little note, then I'll include that and I'll put it in the game. I'm just a little bit odd like that. So um, yeah, and obviously hiding the, the address, even though I've moved house, so it wouldn't make any difference. I don't think Owen would um, approve of me uh, <laughs> putting his address out there on YouTube for all to see. Or maybe you would, you might get some free games. Now, you could get all sorts of free stuff, couldn't you, through the post, so it might not be a good idea. But yeah, I just, I thought I'd start by showing that, but it was pointless, because Owen knows he sent me that game, because he know because he's the one who sent it, and um, I know I've got it, who else needs to know, who else needed to know that story? Nobody, it's pointless. But too late now, I've done it. So yeah, there's a few things I want to talk about. Uh, the first one is, I guess, an extension to what I talked about, well, when was it, two or three vids back? I've not really got a lot to say on it, other than I've not been that active lately in regards to commenting and watching people's vids. And I've just been a little bit busy, and I'm going to be busy for quite some time. Oh, excuse me. And, yeah, but I, I feel guilty because, what, and I'll only speak for myself, of course, but when I subscribe to a channel, I get this, like, kind of enormous sense of obligation where I feel like I've got to watch and comment on everything that people do. And, of course, it's impossible. It really is. And so these days I've slightly changed my tune, but by changing my tune it does make me uh, feel a little bit bad. Uh, what I mean by that is if someone, let's say you, let's say you upload a vid tomorrow and let's say I'm subscribed to you. If I see that vid in my subscription box and it's something which doesn't really interest me, uh, then these days I'm not really watching it unless I've got nothing to do. <laughs> you know, I'm, re I'm really not and I feel quite bad saying that, but it's nothing personal. And similarly, you know, please never feel bad, and I'm sure you don't. Maybe it's just me who feels this stupid sense of obligation. But please don't feel bad to watch everything that I ever do. And I'll touch upon that in the next section, that there's going to be some more kind of vids I'm going to be doing shortly. Or I'm going to start, or I think I'm going to start doing it, we'll see. But, um, but yeah, and people may not watch them, what I do, and that's fine. And this is the point here that I'm trying to make. You know, is we shouldn't really have this obligation to watch everything that people do. Now, obviously, you know, on YouTube, we've all got our close friends now, a little circle that we kind of circulate in. And there's people we prioritise and, and favour over other people because we know them better. And I guess those are maybe exceptions because, you know, I'm contradicting myself now. 
because there are people, and you'll know who you are, and, uh, you know, there's no point naming names and embarrassing myself or yourself, but of course there are people who I've known for a long time who I'll pretty much watch anything they do, w within reason, I guess, because I've known them a long time and that's the way it is. But these days, because I guess it's that whole thing of time management, you know, uh, I just haven't got as much time, spare time, to spend on YouTube. And so I'm being a bit more fussy and choosy about what I'm watching. But as a result, I'm fully conscious of the fact that I'm not commenting on certain people's vids. And I'm paranoid. I mean, I'm not losing sleep over it, but I'm quite paranoid if I dwell on it too much that they're thinking I'm ignoring them. And that's not the case. I'm just, you know, busy and I'm, you know, just, I don't know, I'm using my YouTube time more wisely. Wisely, in inverted commas. And then on top of that, by not being as active on YouTube in general uh, lately than I have been in the past, it's also meaning that I'm completely missing vids. I mean literally missing vids. Because these days, I think if you go like two days without logging in, then any videos which were in your feed get overtaken with new vids. So it's more than conceivable, likely, probable, you know, that you're going to... I don't know, let's say you spend two days away from YouTube and then you log in, there'll be videos which you've missed, which you literally have no idea about. You've no idea that that person uploaded it. And the only way of finding out is if you just so happen uh, to click on their channel by chance or if they tell you or maybe you see it a few days later in your channel feed that someone else has commented. So it's a little bit trickier these days. I know it sounds like I'm making excuses, but a little, little bit trickier to stay on top of all the videos that people are doing. But yeah, um, I am feeling very conscious about the fact that I've not been commenting on a, on a lot of people's vids. It doesn't necessarily mean I'm not watching. Sometimes I watch things on the Kindle, and that's a bastard to type on. It's hard work. You know, because a little tiny keyboard, like on-screen keyboard, it's just, it's just a nightmare. So sometimes I don't bother. And then there's the generic thing. Did I touch, I touch upon this a minute ago? Apologies if I'm repeating myself here. But sometimes I don't want to re uh, repeat... Um, I don't repeat. Sorry, I don't want to leave a generic comment. I don't want to just say you know, nice pickups or nice whatever, it's pointless, I'd rather just say nothing, you know. But then if you don't say anything, I feel bad because then, like I said before, it's like the person doesn't think you're watching their vid and you are, oh, it's a bit of a nightmare. So yeah, the point ultimately is please don't be offended, I can kind of cross this topic off my list now, um, please don't be offended if I don't comment on your vids um, for a while or if I'm infrequent, you don't get offended don't think I think you're a dickhead or don't think I've just unsubscribed or I don't like you anymore. It couldn't be further from the truth, you know, because it's very, very seldom do I unsubscribe from a channel. Uh, I mean, sometimes, and this, this is going to sound like a really bad excuse, but I have noticed a couple of channels lately and I haven't unsubscribed from them and it says that I'm not subscribed and I don't know how that's happened. And, and I can give you a good example as to why I know that there's a fault in the system because the official Manchester City channel and it's a really good channel if you like your football uh, I kind of touch upon this in my next topic actually if you like Manchester City uh, as a football club or if you just like football you might want to check out their YouTube channel because it's really good it's kind of behind the scenes and all the rest of it anyway the point is I've been subscribed to that for about a year and a half or whenever it started and the other day I well it was the other day it was the other week really I thought to myself do you know what for a few days I've not had any City videos what's going on in my subs feed clicked on their channel and it said I wasn't subscribed now I did not unsubscribe from that channel so um yeah that's just just proof i think it really did prove to me that sometimes youtube can automatically for whatever reason unsub you and my little theory on that and it's just a theory and it could be bollocks but i wonder if there is a glitch or was a glitch in the system which automatically unsubscribes you from channels if you haven't been watching their stuff like if you skip their vids i'm just wondering because there's a phase of about a week where I didn't watch any City vids because they were just rubbish. They were coming in my video feed, they were like one and a half minutes long of an interview with a certain player that wasn't interested in watching. And I just kind of clicked on the video and uh, removed it. And I'm wondering if it thought, hang on, he's removing all these vids. Does that mean he doesn't want to unsubscribe? So they automatically unsubscribe me, which they shouldn't do. But maybe, or maybe that's nonsense. But it, it was kind of, I don't know, I just thought there's maybe something in that. Maybe it automatically unsubscribes you from people whose stuff you're not watching. Could be onto something there, or it might be rubbish. So anyway, the point is, what I'm going to do over the course of the next, well, however long, from here on in, I guess, is um, I'm going to go through all the people I'm sub to, and if there's anyone I'm not sub to who I should be sub to, I'm going to have to resubscribe. I don't think there'll be many, if any, but if you see me resubscribing, uh, please don't necessarily 
uh, think that I deliberately unsubscribe because I may not have done. It may have um, it may have done it for me. Or let's face it, I may have unsubscribed uh, and resubscribe, <laughs> which I don't know, uh, which would be a little bit embarrassing. But sometimes that happens. Sometimes people have put out a load of content and I have unsubscribed. I don't do it a lot. I don't do it often. It has happened in the past. And then a few months later, they've kind of started doing videos that I like. So I've resubscribed and you feel a little bit embarrassed because it's like, well, why did you unsubscribe? It's like, I oh, must must blame YouTube, you know, uh, kind of a glitch in the system. Anyway, that, that's a lot of nonsense that I just talked there. So yeah, but it does kind of lead me on to my next point in regards to some more videos which I'm thinking of doing lately. And this isn't going to be for everyone. I know that. I know about, I don't know, two men and his dog, if I'm lucky are going to watch these vids, but what I'm thinking of doing, and you know, nothing's going to change on the gaming front, I'm going to still do my usual vids, this is just like an addition, but what I'm thinking of doing, and especially because, you know, um, we're coming up to kind of pre-season in the football, so I've got a lot of time to think about this, but I'm thinking of doing maybe a weekly, or a monthly, you know, just maybe one video a month, or maybe one a week, or whenever, maybe no set pattern, I'm thinking of doing some kind of chat thing, on City, on Manchester City, because no one else is doing it. Swigger tea, choice of champions, of course. And yeah, I just thought I can come on, on cam and talk about, you know, what I think of the manager. I've won him out already, he's just got there. No, I'm only joking, I'll give him a chance. Manuel Pellegrini, for anyone who cares. Um, but yeah, I could talk about, you know, what I think is going on, the, the, the club, the manager, the players, how well the team are doing, predictions. Um, yeah, just you just do a kind of a weekly sort of roundup or a monthly roundup. City monthly, city monthly well, sounds quite city weekly. Sounds all right as well, doesn't it? So I might do that, but I realise this is the gaming community. Not everybody likes football. Not everybody is going to care about football or me talking about it or Manchester City or any of that malarkey. So uh, it's something I might do, but I'm fully prepared. Uh, for the views to be very low but ultimately I do think you've got to have to do stuff which you like and videos you want to make and this is something which I like the idea of doing it it might be rubbish I might do one or two it might be a disaster it might not we'll see we'll give it a go but there's no harm in trying and that's why I always say to people if you want to do something on your channel it doesn't have to be gaming related just do it give it a try why not you know it might go down like a lead balloon but you've got to be true to yourself on your channel. It's your channel and it's your rules and you've got to do what you want ultimately. Um, you know, don't conform to what other people want you to do. You've got to do what you want to do. But like I say, in the, in the same breath, nothing's going to change on my channel in the sense that I'm still going to be doing my gaming stuff. It's just extra stuff. Look at it like free DLC. Free DLC from, from me. Um, but oh yeah, I've just wrote here about uh, the Bournemouth. Bournemouth branch. Uh, just a little story I can tell here. Yeah, what, so this is around about the, the millennium, give or take. Let's just say the turn of, of, of the millennium. And at the time, you know, living in Bournemouth, we moved down to Bournemouth as a kid, and um, it was around about the millennium, as I say, and I thought to myself, do you know what? I go to a few Manchester City games, or did back then. Obviously, I'm in America, a little bit difficult now. Uh, but back then, I was still going to a lot of the games with, with a few friends, you know, travelling up and, and back again and all that kind of stuff. And I thought, wouldn't it be cool, in my infinite wisdom, wouldn't it be cool if I could sort uh, or form a Manchester City official supporters club or branch in Bournemouth? Wouldn't that be great? And so what I did, and this shows how far away the club are from what, uh, now, from what they were. They're now completely unapproachable because of all the billions which are, which are in, the, in the football club and in football in general. But what I did back then, like I say, around about 2000, I sent an email. I hadn't had the internet long. I think I only got it in like 99 or something like that. So yeah, around about 2000, as I keep saying, and I sent the club uh, an official email. And the Manchester City website back then was rubbish. The official website, it, the colours were ghastly. It was terrible, really bad design. It was very basic and there was nothing to it. Because it was YouTube, uh, the YouTube, because it was the internet in its infancy and everything was very basic and it was just, yeah, it looked awful. And even back then, it looked awful for something as professional as Manchester City. Uh, you know, a professional football club, it just looked rubbish. And anyway, so I went on there and I navigated around the, uh, the, the site and uh, I contacted the, whoever it was, the club secretary, Shirley, or whatever her name was. And I said, hi, Shirley, or whoever. 
Uh, my name is Alex. I'm living in Bournemouth these days, a city fan, thinking of supporting. Uh, thinking, of, thinking of supporting City. Can you tell me how to do that? Now, thinking of starting uh, an official supporters club in Bournemouth. Can I do it? And how do I do it? And she replied back like the next day, and went, uh, you know, oh yeah, hi Alex. Of course you can do it. Like naive, you know, unbelievable. Um, and she went, all you need is you need I think 20 members, you know, so 20 signatures and addresses of people, and I paid 20 quid, you know, for for everyone, not each. And, uh, and this, that, and the other, a little a mini checklist, and that's all you need, and you can be an official, not an unofficial, this was an official bloody supporters branch, it was so ridiculous, like amateurish, and, um, and in the end I didn't do it, and I'm kicking myself to a degree, not that it would make any difference, because like I say, I'm in America, so it wouldn't matter now anyway, but for a while, for a few years, until I came over here, I did kick myself, because not long after that, you know, City really kicked on, and especially now, because, you know, the richest club on the planet, and if I contacted them now and said, oh, hi, yeah, I'm, I'm in Bournemouth. I'm thinking of, uh, you know, creating an official supporters club, an official supporters branch. Can I do it? First of all, they wouldn't even reply to the email. They'd think, who's this loser? And secondly, there'd probably already be about 10 supporters branches in that kind of part of the world anyway. So I kind of I kicked myself to a degree because I missed the boat there. I could have been, well, who knows what I could have been? I could have been on the board at Manchester City. I could have been doing anything crazy with the club. So I really missed out, so I kind of regret that. But in the end, I didn't do it, because I just thought, well, what's the point? I go to the games anyway, I go with a bunch of friends, and all the supporters club or branch would do, it would just, you know, I'd meet a load of new people, which could kind of be good as well, but there'd be randoms, and all I'd be doing is talking to them about what I was already talking about with my other friends, and going to the games with these new random people, which I was already doing anyway. It just didn't seem worth it and then there's the hassle of arranging transportation and stuff for everybody and membership fees and I thought Do you know what I can't be asked with this so I didn't get back to her in the end uh, with you know uh, I didn't fill out the forms but I could have I could have done it and uh, I kind of regret that but it's like I say it shows how far the club have come um, sorry how far the club have come because you definitely couldn't do that these days it's completely ridiculous so that's that so yeah I may do some city vids god I've been talking for a while I may do some city vids um but yeah, don't feel an obligation to watch them because I know everybody doesn't like football and all the rest of it. But if you do like football or if you're just interested, you want some audio going on in the background, then uh, you might want to just give it a try. Why not? It'll be rubbish, but give it a try anyway. So that's that. This is annoying me now with the bloody blue screen in the background. Let me, should we have a little bit of a game? Let me just let give you a different screen. Oh, and then you're greeted with this. I'll tell you what we can do. Should we see who's online? Let's see if there's any YouTubers online. Why not? It's two people online. Who are they going to be? Ah, that first one you won't know him because I know him from when I was a kid. He's playing Modern Warfare 3. And coincidentally, old Marcus there, X-File 2708, pitching up on Modern Warfare 3. You dark horse. I thought you were playing Black Ops 2. Going back to Modern Warfare 3. Right, so let's... Uh, can you even hear this? I think you can hear that's pretty loud. Automatic transmission. Outrun mode. Splash wave? What do you reckon? Oh, classic. Magical sound shower. Passing breeze? Or do you prefer risky ride? No, me neither. It's got to be this. Or... That's a good one, all this. It's gotta be that, hasn't it, really? Magical sound shower. Anyway, that last 30 seconds were pointless. <laughs> so what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna show you um, the Atari ST games. Should I switch the camera around? I can't be bothered, I can't be bothered. Let's turn the sound on. Actually, I'm gonna switch the camera around. <laughs> it's a complete like uh, mismatch of a vid. So yeah, anyway, I'll switch the camera around and we'll do kind of a, a pointing down and show the instructions and inside the box, the size, that kind of stuff. So uh, yeah, nine Atari ST games. It's kind of eight, but it's nine. You'll see what I mean in a second. Right then, welcome back. Switch the camera around and you can be greeted with some uh, a tanglement, is that even a word, tanglement, of, uh, of wires. So like I say, I bought some Atari ST games. There are nine Kind of eight, but sort of nine. You'll see what I mean. And let's start off with that confusion by showing you the um, 
the one which is causing the issues. So the first one up is APB. Now, this is the budget version. This isn't the one that technically I bought because I originally wanted this one, which was kind of the, the big box version in kind of like a plastic case. Now, if any of you guys are subscribed to Mark, the joy of sticks, and if you're not subscribed to him, you should. He's on my like channel page. By the way, if you're not on my recommended channel list, it doesn't mean to say I don't recommend your channel. I just haven't updated it for ages. But anyway, you can see um, you can see him on there. It's got a really good channel. And uh, if you like your Atari ST, especially your ST stuff, he does buy other things as well. But particularly your ST, then um, then you'll like his channel because he, he knows his stuff and um, all the rest of it. But yeah, I think Mark showed off uh, a game in this kind of case for the escape of the planet, uh, not the escape of the planet, yeah, well, what's it called? Escape? Escape from the planet of the robot monsters, that's it, what a mouthful. And I'm pretty certain that came in one of these cases, but I, I stand corrected, could be completely wrong. But yeah, this is the version that I wanted, and it was 99 pence, and I was the only bidder, but this is the one that arrived. And I sent the guy an email, and there's a few other games I bought from as well, and I said, look, um, I know it was only 99 pence, but this budget version is not the one that I wanted, and um, I'm sorry, but, you know, can you send the one I did buy? And, you know, I was nice about it. And, of course, he replied, and he was very apologetic, and just said, oh, sorry, my mistake. Um, I'll send the other one out to you. And and so he did. He sent this one, which I'm really pleased it, uh, with, because it's quite tricky to, to track down. In saying that, I'll go on eBay now, and I'll see, like, 25 copies of it. But, yeah, getting this big box version, complete, in good condition, quite hard to get. So it does mean I've got this one as well. Now, I haven't contacted the seller to say, what do you want me to do with this? I mean, he can have it back, of course he can, but he'll have to pay the shipping, and whether he wants to, for the sake of uh, an, a budget version of APB, I highly doubt it. So I'll have to ask him that, but I'm pretty certain he's just going to say you can keep it, in which case I've got two copies of APB. So that's the first one. The next one up is completely my mistake. I mean, I'm glad I've got this game. It's called Pipe Mania. But a bit of a problem in the sense that it's a really small box. <laughs> And I didn't realise, in fact, you can tell, look at the disc there. It's one of these mini boxes. Now, I remember these mini boxes from the past on games such as Batman. And I think Back to the Future 2 also had a really tiny one like this. But usually, I mean, I know for a fact this, this game is available, available sorry, in a bigger version. But obviously this is a shortened one as well. It comes with the instructions, a little whatever that is, a passcode or something in the disc. So, yeah, um, I'm not really, <laughs> I'm not particularly chuffed that that has arrived in uh, in the small box variety. But, like I say, completely my fault. And if you're wondering what Pipe Mania is, it, it's just kind of like a puzzle game, essentially, involving uh, pipes, funnily enough. Next, and I'll show you a, a better comparison on how small that box is when I show you the next game. And the next one up is a classic, it really is. I love it. Not everyone's cup of tea, uh, but I love it anyway. And it's Xenon 2 Mega Blast with the music uh, by Bomb the Bass, Bomb the Bass, Bomb the Bass, and yeah, brilliant as well. In fact, this is one of the few, and there are a few, and this is one of them, where the music on the ST is way better, way better than the Amiga. It's pretty much the same, apart from the intro. I think it's like, um, how would you describe it? Just maybe a little bit rockier at the start. It's like kind of like a sampled uh, stutter, which is on there, which sounds a bit silly, but it really makes, as far as I'm concerned, the ST version stand out big time. So, yeah, but I guess it's a game of opinions, isn't it? But, yeah, one of the few exceptions where the ST music is better. And, like I say, to show you a comparison, you put the Pipe Mania box on there, and as you can... Can you really see? I guess you can a little bit. It's a really small version. But, anyway, I will, because I'm a little bit anal about that, I will get the bigger version of Pipe Mania eventually, because this won't suffice. <laughs> as far as I'm concerned, there's a bit of an OCD kind of ST... I was going to say collector, but I'm not literally a collector, but you know what I mean. So anyway, it comes all um, complete and in great condition. I'd probably not been picked up on that. But even the corners, I mean, there's no marks on it. It's amazing. And if anybody wants to see the back, if you don't know what Xenon 2 is, it's just a shooter, basically. A shooter with fantastic music. And this really reminds me of uh, back in the day. A particular friend of mine called Sam had this. And, uh, you know, the big box version. And I was really jealous because I didn't have it. I always had to borrow this game. And eventually I got a, a copied version of it. And, um, yeah, yeah, really good game, but not for everyone. Someone said recently they weren't a massive fan. I don't know who it was. I might be putting words in people's mouths, so I don't want to have a guess who do I think it was. But someone said it wasn't too good, or they preferred the original. 
Um, who was it? It might have been Mark, actually, the Joy of Sticks. Or maybe it was Ash, 81B4U. Said I didn't want to name everyone, I've just named two. And this little spongy foam there. I know you didn't want to see it, I just kind of, I wanted to touch it. I know, it's a bit weird. <laughs> so that's that. So yeah, in amazing condition. I'm really pleased. And these are all really cheap, by the way. You know, again, I think this is about £1.50 or something silly like that. Let me just have a swig of tea. As you can stare at some um, wires again. Or... You can have another dose of magical sound shower of, uh, from Outrun. Next up is Tetris. Now this is one I wasn't really bothered about, but it came in, a, came in the bundle basically. So it worked out uh, at, a, at a cheap price. In fact, worked out about a quid. So yeah, happy to get this. Now I love Tetris, it's a great game and, uh, and all the rest of it, but the chances of me playing the ST version, uh, not very high, I've got to be honest, because I just love it on, you know, on the Mac, on the PC, I've got it on the 360, I've got it on the PlayStation 3, uh, you know, the PS3 exclusive version, and that's really good. But uh, I, yeah, I was just curious, I thought, well, why not get this as well? Cover's nice, and it's in one of these sort of slip, uh, slip folder things. So yeah, again, good condition. Pleased to get that, but um, only really got it because it was cheap. Now the next four are all Signosis. And the first one is a slightly smaller box, and they're all in amazing condition. And the first one is Shadow of the Beast, a game which I've wanted to get for ages. Now, speaking of music, to kind of even it up a little bit, the music on the Amiga version is far superior, and that's an understatement, uh, you know, compared to the ST. But still, the ST is all right for, you know, for what it can do. But I think the ST, a lot of people give, you know, the, uh, the Atari ST a lot of stick in regards to the sound. Graphically, it's, it's just as good. Uh, as the Amiga can't produce as many on-screen colours, but basically it sort of looks the same. Uh, but the sound was where the ST always used to come down big time. And yeah, there are a few exceptions. As I said Xenon 2 is one of them and there are several others. But uh, usually, more often than not, the sound on the Amiga trounced the ST. But, you know, the ST is where my nostalgia lies, so it's a no-brainer for me. And again, there's the inside of the box, registration card, there's the discs. And everything is in fantastic condition. And I love this, you know, how some of the old games... Oh, maybe not so much this one. I thought it was one of these cassette holders. In fact, it does kind of look like a cassette holder, doesn't it? But without the little um, twin things to put the reels there. But yeah, so that's that. So really pleased to get that game. As I keep saying, the Amiga version is definitely better, uh, at least sonically, you know, when it comes to the audio. But graphically, I don't think there's anything in it, really. And it's just a, it's just a scrolling... Shooter stroke fighter, I guess, really. So that's that. The next three. First up is an absolute classic on hundreds of systems. It's a slight exaggeration. And it's Lemons. And look at the artwork. It's brilliant, isn't it? Really takes me back. Really does. And I've touched upon this story before, but I remember I was going to Tenerife and a friend of mine called Ben, who now lives in Australia, he, uh, he had a copy of this. Oh no, sorry, he didn't have a copy. Well, I'm lying already. He had a Game Boy, and I wanted to borrow the Game Boy, and I had a duplicate copy of this game, of Lemons. And I said to him, uh, can I borrow, uh, borrow, that was very posh, can I borrow your Game Boy? <laughs> and he said, why are you doing that silly voice? No, I said, can I borrow your, your, your Game Boy um, to take the Centre Reef? And of course he went, uh, no, of course you can't. <laughs> why not? Um, why, why would I? Why, why would I do that? And then I said, well, I'll tell you what, I'll give you a spare copy of Lemons if you let me borrow it. And he went, you're serious? I went, yeah. And he went, all right then. So I gave him my duplicate copy, boxed of Lemons. He gave me his Game Boy for a week. I took it to Tenerife and uh, happy days. We were both happy. So yeah, brilliant game. And I, do you really want to... Oh, actually, I will show you inside because there's a couple of things to... Oh, actually, I'm going to have to play around the camera here. So yeah, this is like all Signosis games. You take the, the slip cover off, which is there, and you're greeted with another bigger box. Again, look, presentation's just fantastic. And then you just lift this off. Now this is extra weird because you get some instructions, and then you get a disc, obviously, but then you get, apart from the registration card, you get a separate set of instructions, which are these, and then a separate disc. Now I'm wondering if this is like the American release, and the UK release, because I remember when I had it, you know, back in the day, as the cliche goes, I had these instructions and that disc. So I'm wondering, like I say, whether in America they got the, the darker version with that. But why they'd include the European and the American one, I'm not sure. So that's a bit weird. But, um, but still, there we are. But classic game, brilliant on so many systems. And again, it's another one which I downloaded. And in fact, I did a gameplay of it. 
on the PlayStation 3 ages ago. So um, yeah, you might want to see that, you might not. Next one up, again, the last two are Signosis, as I think I've said already. Uh, Obliterator. Now, I've never played this before, but again, look at the artwork. Stunning. Absolutely stunning, as is the next one. It's even better, really. Um, not much of a side view there. Uh, Signals, it's always kind of the same, you know, uh, on the sides. You get the, the name of the game in the big letters. Signals at the top and probably at the bottom as well. Yeah, there we are. So if you want to have a look inside, why not? I think it's going to drop. There we go. Again, greeted with this. Take the lid off. And inside we get the discs. Discs A and disc B. Nice purple instruction manual there. Virus warning, you must power off your computer before loading this software. And then you get, I'm not going to unfold it, but you get a nice little uh, nice little poster there. And a registration card. With, uh, in the background, with the Signosis Owl. <laughs> so yeah, that poster obviously is just the uh, front cover of that. Now I'm not going to put it up. You know, I'm not really into posters. Nothing wrong with people who are. I'm not obviously not having a dig at anyone. But it's just something which... It's not for me. It would have been when I was, you know, this age, 13 or 14, but um, so I'm not having a dig and then I just say that. It sounds like a dig. You know what I mean. Anyway, last up, uh, but not least, as I whack my knee against that, is Blood Money. Again, I've got to talk about the music here. It's brilliant on the Atari ST, but it's even better on the Amiga because I think the Amiga's got like an extended intro, which the ST doesn't have. And on that intro is an extra bit of music and it's really good. You might want to um, YouTube it if you're that interested. Maybe eventually I'll do some gameplay, but uh, yeah, for now, obviously I'll, uh, I'll just show this in um, as a pickup. But there we are, same old, same old, on the sides and the bottom, Signosis logo, the Signosis on that side and on the top and the name of the game on there, Blood Money. And again, look at the artwork. It's just brilliant. Well, I like it anyway. It really takes me back. It just seems as if games back then, I don't know, as if the artwork was just um, superior, dare I say. And it's just uh, a shooter. It looks really good. Really, really good. Now, I'm not that much... Well, I was gonna say I'm not that much of a shooting fan. That's a lie. I am a shooting fan. I'm just not an expert on the subject or on the genre. But it looks good, and I'm, I'm looking forward to giving that a go. And did I even show you what Obliterator looks like? I don't think I did. That's the back, uh, the screenshots of Obliterator. It's like a side-scrolling shooter, but I think it's a little bit weird in the sense that you control it with a mouse and the keyboard, or is it a mouse and a joystick at the same time? Which sounds bizarre. I think it's mouse and keyboard. I don't know whether it works or not, but um, but yeah, that's that's how you control it. Pretty strange. So let's take the back off this. Or the cover off, I should say. Again, same old, same old. You're greeted with the Signosis thing. And there's the disc. Or two discs, I should say. A nice basic, but it kind of looks cool and retro. Uh, Illuminous sort of green instruction manual. And then you'll get the poster, which is what this is. Again, I'm going to have to play around with this camera. And there's the owl. So, And the poster obviously being that. So anyway, that is, uh, that's my Atari ST pickups. Yeah, I've really got back into the ST lately. And it's funny, there's a YouTuber which, you again, you're probably going to be aware of, Minx36, that's Craig. And Craig has gone on record in the past of saying that when it comes to the, uh, the no, not Atari ST, the Commodore 64, he'll pretty much buy anything. It's, it's kind of his poison. And I've got to be honest, you know, when it comes to the Atari ST, I'm the same. I've got to fight to put all these bloody covers on now. But yeah, I'm kind of... Um, and with one hand as well. This is really bloody difficult. But yeah, I can definitely see myself going down that route in the future of just picking up pretty much anything for the Atari ST, which is a bit of a danger because there's thousands and thousands of games available. But not just that, but also the majority are really cheap. And, and to be honest, that's another reason why I've got back into the... Oh, this is kind of working actually, isn't it? As I, as I put them all on top of each other. Yeah, another reason why I've got back into the ST lately is because apart from, you know, the main reason being that you know, nostalgically, I absolutely love it. But the games are so much cheaper than the, you know, their counterparts on the on the Commodore Amiga. And it's just a case of, well, why pay more for what is essentially the same game aesthetically? You know, graphically, it looks the same. The music is like I keep saying, usually better on the Amiga. But does it really matter? You know, is it that much of a big deal? Should I pay like, I mean, like Xenon 2 for the Amiga is probably going to be about, you know, seven, eight quid for the ST looking at four or five. All of these games, Shadow of the Beast on the Amiga, 10, 15 quid on the ST, again, half that price. 
So it just makes more sense. But like I say, more importantly for me, it's got this, or the Atari ST has the nostalgic element. You know, it's got that tie to it, which, um, you know, you can't put a price on nostalgia. So I can definitely see myself just get into a, a situation, like I say, with the Atari ST, where I just pretty much, within reason, I guess, pick up anything. And um, and yeah, this has started with with this bundle here. So quite a nice set. There's a few that I'm, or a couple that I'm not too bothered about. Uh, looking at it there, I mean that copy of Pipe Mania looks ridiculously tiny. Uh, the budget version of APB, not bothered about, but like I said, the, the proper one came through in the end. Tetris, again, I, I just kind of picked it up because I'm a fan of Tetris, but everything else, you know, I bought because I really wanted. So, uh, yeah, there's another bundle of games to come, and I'll make another video of that, I guess, when it arrives, maybe next week or the week after, or whenever. Anyway, thanks for watching, and I'll see you later.